Okay, so for the week, for the first colon in week two, four through six, I'm updating the video uh, that's listed here for this semester because I want to talk about what I, you know, didn't get to in the attendance just to give you some heads up. So what I have here is I have opened the markdown file here. Right? And I wanna, I've already talked about the validator if you want to get the extension. I talked about the issues with the prettier right, and the self-closing and why that. I didn't talk a lot about that, but in that case, you know, I don't recommend using prettier, uh, just using the default formatter. So, but in um, chapter five, right, so in this case, remember, you always got to start and make sure you have the commits because that's how I grade. So we're going to learn about different um, OLs, ULs, and DLs, uh, which is kind of cool uh, to learn about these different um, tags. Now, in this case, you can call them tags, some call them elements, right? Uh, but also Dave talks about some good productivity tools about multi-line selection. That is really good to know how to do as well. And now in chapter five though, because of our setup, um, you know, there's, there's a discussion about relative versus uh, absolute versus relative referencing uh, when, in this case, when he's uh, doing a forward slash because of the way his folder is set up because he doesn't have this base folder like we do. So this concept when he does the forward slash actually will not work uh, for our particular setup. And in general, it probably is just not a great idea as well, okay? So I just want you to know that don't, when he puts a forward slash either here uh, on uh, the types of links when he does that as well, just know that won't, it'll break that. So just don't include the forward slash when you do that and as a matter of fact the same thing will apply to images so I'm actually going to show you the example in images but just know it also applies to the links when he talks about the a ref okay now and this is and what you want to know about this and let's just actually go to one of here's the image right here right so here's what I want you to see is that I have this page up I've already got it loaded here's the image right and so if I was to do a forward slash here as you see Dave do in the video because of Dave's video his folder structure that works for his but for ours it doesn't and in general I think this is a better uh, way to do it anyway okay and let me just show you what will happen when I refresh this page oh actually I gotta start up my live server again hopefully you're getting used to the way live server is you'll get what's called a broken image Okay, uh, this will be true not only here, but when you actually push to the web and you look, and in this case, we're not looking rendering pages on the web yet. That's something we'll do in week uh, three. But notice, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to get rid of that. And now it should be fine. And by the way, notice what live server is doing here. It's actually automatically as soon as I make changes, which is why I love live server. Now let's talk about for just a second why this breaks. Okay, and the reason is, is because the way we have this open, we actually have a folder that has a repo that's a folder that has another folder inside of it. So when we're running live server, as a matter of fact, notice what happens if I just go back and just do live servers running from this is the root is actually this folder because it's the base folder we have open. So this is, in this case, our root folder. So when you do forward slash on that, it says, I can't find that file. Okay, let me just show you again. There we go. Let's go back. Oh, actually, that's a different one, but it doesn't matter. It's the same uh, concept. Let's actually go here. And then I'll go to two, right? So that actually creates that same broken image, right? That broken image because it can't, because what it's looking for is in this case, it's looking for the root IMJ. And then it's looking for what's the name of that file, HTML, right? Underscore logo, 
but I think you get the idea and it won't be able to find that right so if we were to let me just copy it so I can make this a little quicker without you having to watch me type if I was to just go try to and this is another thing you can do sometimes to troubleshoot so when you hit enter it's not gonna find that and why is that because it's in a folder right uh, off of the root which has got a folder and within there is a folder right so and by the way I'm going to show you DevTools in a minute because there's another way in DevTools you could also play with this but let me bring you back here so that's why placing this forward slash on both links and on images and we're going to actually talk about images next week a little more uh, the image directory okay so but when I get rid of that then that brings the image back so more than anything what I want you to know here is that when you're doing links and when you ha when you have this as images when you're uh, doing uh, image when you're writing image tags and you have an attribute for source this can also create an, uh, a problem because of uh, when Dave's doing it he's assuming a different file structure and when we're doing it in our class and sometimes on the web depending on how you're publishing your sites you you have to understand where the root of something is okay and that's why it's important to have that understanding okay so now let's talk about the images themselves and how to find them because that's the other thing about this uh, that you're coming into is you're going to create this images directory and then he, Dave's going to say you know you can get these files off of his uh, github so I actually want to walk you through that because I think it's an important process for you to know how to do so on Dave's uh, YouTube videos right that we're working through the HTML if you come to here and you hit more and I know that's a little hard to see and you come down here you scroll down you'll see the uh, links to all the tutorial that actually goes to github to Dave's repo now in this case the reason you know and I the reason I like that Dave's provides this is that you can then look at your code compared to his but because we have commits you can't necessarily copy it but you can at least figure out maybe where you missed something okay so I like that Dave provides it it's really great in that case so but in we in uh, chapter 6 when we hit chapter 6 and he has you create that images directory I want to show you when you go out to Dave's site and you hit like the first file right you're going to do this you're going to see this file and there's a couple ways you can copy this into your local system but I find just clicking on the image right click on it save image as and now what you can do is navigate to wherever you have your uh, base folder and you would go into your right your private repo whatever folder you're working on you've already created this and then when you save it here now I have already saved it so you can see it it's kind of a little lighter there now I'm using a Mac but the Windows side of this is not really any different it's file manager versus finder but it's the same concepts right and then that will save it locally okay so a I want you I'm not gonna do it here but I want to show you because you'll end up needing all three of those images right and that's what I talk about here right um, and then again make sure you're reading along very carefully with this part and he's gonna talk about fig and fig caption and these are important especially here because as we do more images in this class you'll hear me say always make sure you have your images in figure and you have a fig caption so make sure you pay attention and that's where taking notes like I talked about there is good okay so that's the first topic I wanted to go over was copying images and it got me talking about uh, that other topic of the you know making sure that you don't use that uh, either in links or uh, in um, right uh, because of the way our folder structure is set up okay so this week um, you'll see that I do something that you haven't seen before which is breaks are important so if you get to this point if you get through chapter 5 so you get to 4 right and you get all the way through 5 um, now before you start 6 you can optionally take a 24-hour break okay now what does that mean 
What that means is you can go ahead and submit your history URL and this shows me you've completed it up to this point. And if you do that, then it qualifies you for an additional 24 hours to do the last part. Now, if you're feeling fine and you feel like, you know what, I got this, I don't need anything else, cool. Then you don't, it, they are optional. They are not required by any means. So you can gauge for yourself if you feel like you need a break on these or not. Okay, but if you want to take a break, then code up, you know, to the point after, like code through five, submit your U history URL, and then you'll come back after you finish it and submit your history URL again, just showing me that you've completed them. Okay, so in this case, that's an option. I just want you to know about how that works. Okay, now let's talk about Chrome DevTools because I kind of brought it up a minute ago and, and this is something that especially as we move further into this class, matter of fact, let me just show you this. So if you took my 82 class, you know about this. If you didn't, this is good to know and even if you did, a reminder is good. So when you right click and you hit inspect, there's also a keyboard shortcut. When you're in here, it'll default into elements. Now yours may look different here because of your resolution and other things like that. So when I'm troubleshooting things, I often like to look at and notice how when I just move my mouse and you can kind of see it here, like when I'm on body, it shows me everything in the HTML, right? In the page itself, when I'm in head, it wouldn't because of that this is the body of the HTML. This shows me the elements that are in here. I can use the drop down. It'll show me that's a section. It's got an ID on it. Right, I can also, like I was showing you, uh, let me see if I can drill down to where that, yeah, there's a link here. It's actually going to do, and that's the other thing. If I want to go to a specific area, I'd right click, I'd hit inspect, right? And there's where that, Im and I can actually, now this doesn't modify my HTML, but if I put that forward slash there, and then I could break that image and notice what happens here is there is actually an error in addition to the visual error that you're going to get here. And so what happens is you can modify this code, right? You can edit attributes and tags and then just to kind of play around. And then if I wanted it, remember, you're not modifying your HTML, but if I hit refresh here, then it goes back to this, you know, it's only when you're modifying it inside of here that it matters, but there are definitely times and you'll see this moving forward that you can use this dev tool which we'll learn more about later but the sooner you learn about it it is just great to have some knowledge about okay all right so that's your updated uh, video for this one. Uh, I know it's a little bit longer. That's why I offer the break. I'm actually going to offer a break also in the, uh, the second one, which I'll go do a little video for that one now. Okay. Talk to you later.